like to call this uh, meeting of the Board of Education to order. Please rise for the pledge. Uh, and following the Pledge of Allegiance, we're going to have a moment of silence um, since this is the 11th anniversary. Um, led by Ms. Klebowski. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before I knew it, I was a grade behind and I felt swallowed by the work. I was under a lot of stress. My counselor started talking about five-year plans and JC classes, but realistically I was still looking at another year of AHS later than my expected graduation date. Um, at that point, I wanted to quit school and I just wanted to drop out and take my GED. I heard about San Antonio, my best friend actually went there, and she told me that if you worked really hard, you can make up credits quicker than most schools. I decided to try the school despite the stereotypes I had heard about it, that you know, all the bad kids go there, or all the rejects go there, which is not true. And then San Antonio quickly became like family to me. Um, I started school with a bad attitude. Uh, I had my guard up, I didn't want to trust the teachers. But when I met all the teachers and students, I was so surprised to see how open-minded and welcoming everybody was. The teachers are so enthusiastic and dedicated to helping you get on track. Um, they really helped me focus on my goals of graduation. I've had lots of ups and downs at school, but um, every day that I come to school, somebody asks me how I'm doing or how they can make my day better. Um, there's always somebody to talk to at San Antonio High School. Um, when I come to school, I feel respected and heard, which is nice, because I didn't feel like that when I was younger. Um, while going here, I've improved on my communication skills. I've learned to be less defensive and more patient. Um, we're a small school and all the people here are different in so many different ways and we all have different stories and backgrounds, but we've all learned to come together to help each other. Um, we all have the same goal and that's to graduate or at least get on the track to graduation. And my counselor is constantly reminding me of all the classes and opportunities that come up to help me earn credit, to help, to help me graduate. Um, while making up the credits, I actually found classes that I enjoyed taking. Um, that I joined the leadership class, which works together in bringing the school together through various hands-on, student-involved activities, such as we have school barbecues, spirit weeks, special days, bake sales. Um, one year, we even had a pie throwing contest to raise money for the school, in which several teachers and even the principal participated in. <laughs> um, we recently began to elect student body, like president, secretary, treasurer, and um, we elect those through the ASB class, or leadership class. Um, other unique classes and programs that are also offered at San Antonio include uh, 60s literature that counts for English credit. Um, we do spin bikes and we have Odyssey Wear. It's a computer program that you can take at home and earn credits there. Um, 
We have a media class. We have a sociology class that actually did a huge project last year. Oh, they were in the paper, and it was, it was a big deal. So um, there's also an incredible child care program that aids young mothers in finishing school and also helps them learn important life skills that they can use in the future. Um, all the schoolwork is done at school, and we generally don't have homework that gives that kind of gives me time to do my what I want to do after school, like get a job or babysit my brothers or whatever. Um, before I went to San Antonio, I felt hopeless. I wanted to drop out of school, um, but when I started at San Antonio, I realized that there was hope. With the support of the San Antonio staff and my hard work that I did myself, I quickly started to do better than I had ever done before. I felt more confident in my work, and I now believe that I can have anything that I want as long as I work for it and I work hard for it. I'm now expecting to graduate early this October, and I'm planning on continuing my education at the SRJC, which I wasn't going to do before. <laughs> and through my ups and downs of high school, I've grown so much, and I'm so thankful for alternative schools, because without San Antonio, I might have given up. And I'm proud to say that I'm graduating from San Antonio High School. Thank you. is that she was just voted president of the ASB yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Our speaker from Valley Oaks is Amanda George. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Amanda George. One of the best decisions I made in my life thus far was the one to transfer to Valley Oaks. Every week, I cannot wait to be greeted by Trisha at the front office and then meet with my teacher for our weekly meeting. What is really working for me and my peers is the one-on-one -on -one education we are receiving. The teacher for each subject knows our strengths and weaknesses when it comes to learning, and then they are able to structure the curriculum around that. What makes Valley Oaks so special is the freedom and individual responsibility each student gains just by attending the school, not to mention the better quality of education of instruction we are getting. I transferred in February of my sophomore year after a tough first semester at my previous school. I've always been a good student at mainstream schools, but at Valley Oaks, I became a great one. I didn't feel like I was learning the subjects to my fullest extent of my personal potential because of the classroom setting. Now at Valley Oaks, I have time to ask my teacher any questions I have on work without having to be rushed into an answer so they can move on to the next student. Because of this benefit, I'm proud to say that I received my first B in math. Aside from my core classes, I've also taken culinary arts and child development. Each class has been so different because of the subject, but similar because of the teaching styles among the teachers. I'm able to complete each course faster than at regular school because I can turn in more work than necessary. I'm hoping to graduate six months early because I have the capability to do work at my own pace. Aside from the classes I've taken, Valley Oaks offers students a wide variety of courses. You can take the spin class, thanks to the PEF grant last year, or even Tai Chi classes for PE. If you excel at math, you can take higher level classes. There is also a vast selection of site selectives or personalized special projects that include community service opportunities and individualized electives. You can even turn in your work hours at a job into credits through the special projects program. The students at Valley Oaks not only taking, are not only taking the core classes needed to graduate, but some are outstanding athletes and volunteers in the community. Many of my peer peers are planning to attend four-year colleges or have plans to enter the business world right after graduation. One student is already designing her own business line to pursue after she completes her high school education. With the free time you gain by attending Valley Oaks, students have the opportunity to concurrently enroll at the junior college and take classes there. You earn credits at both schools by doing this, which is a great way to get ahead in your schooling. The most common question I'm asked when I'm explaining Valley Oaks is, what about the social part? Don't you miss seeing your friends? And to be honest, I made more friends after transferring than I had before. I took classes at the JC and went out more after school with friends I already had, which helped me build strong relationships with them. I haven't suffered socially at all. There's also a program set up for 7th and 8th grade students who, can, who transfer so they can go to an hour-long workshop once a week and interact with each other. Being social is never really a problem for teenagers. I want to thank everyone on the board for their support of this alternative form of education. I have benefited so much from my school and I've become much more responsible and independent. Mainstream high schools aren't always the best option for students, so when they have a choice of where they can learn, they have the potential to be so much more successful. 
Valley Oaks is the best school I've attended. I love being a part of the family. Thank you. Um, we really appreciate, uh, those were both excellent presentations. Um, and I, I say this every time we have a, a presenter from either of the schools. Um, we're just thrilled that we have alternative programs in the Petaluma District because not every student learns the same way. And um, my own daughter went to Valley Oaks, so I can attest to that personally. Um, and uh, we just, we're so impressed with the hard work that all of the students at both of those schools um, give and, and um, their success. So thank you very much for those reports. Um, next, I would like the principal, Shaley, from Casa Grande to introduce her student representatives for the year. We have just one student representative here tonight, but I'd like to introduce Lexi Schulter, who will give us her report. Welcome. Hi, I'm Lexi Schleder. I'm just going to tell you a bit about what we've been doing. Okay, so we had our first rally on Friday. And it was really high spirited and it was a great way to start off the year. We've been trying to build school unity, so we had a spirit week ahead of time, and a lot of people participated, which was a good way to start off the year. Um, also, to welcome the students back to school, the leadership class is hosting a free uh, lunch on Thursday, the same night as back to school night, and so the kids who wear green and gold will receive food. So, hopefully, we get a good turnout for that. And so, um, on October 3rd, we'll be, we will be participating in Bike to School Day, and so we're going to encourage people to bike, walk, and skate to school to save the environment. Um, also, in just three weeks of the school that have happened, the graphic design students have already produced, designed, and printed $350 worth of t-shirts. Um, in the media marketing and management pathway, the English event planning, and entrepreneur students um, will be collaborating to produce a fantastic holiday sales event to take care of underprivileged families. Um, in the liberal studies pathway, the seniors have already completed their senior project interviews and will be handling, handing in their proposals this coming week. And so the, plus, the teachers in the cluster are gonna be advisors to the other students so that it will be more personalized and streamlined and they're looking forward to working with their students. Um, the advanced board med students have been receiving good interviews from the coaches and the teams that they've been assigned. Also in the athletic department, the Casa Grande cheerleaders attended the UC Davis cheer camp this summer, and they came home with a bunch of awards. The varsity squad won first place in home dance camp, or camp champs cheer, and second place in Camp Champs Dance. Um, the highest award that they received in the cheerleading program was the Superior Squad Trophy, and this is a leadership award. And all the students who attended the camp um, voted what squad they would want to be on if they weren't on their own, and Casa Grande was voted. That was the second year in a row. Um, also, because of two grants um, from DonorsChoose.org, which is funded by McNear's Pub and Bank of the West South McDowell. The Big House Library um, now has six new Kindle Touches, which students can read e-books e on. And also, because of grants from the small learning communities, um, our library also just got 20 new iPod Nanos and Touches so that they can load audiobooks for students who um, listen better to books. Um, uh, CASA has also received their early assessment program college readiness results from last year, and the scores went up for the fifth year in a row. Um, CASA showed a 3% gain in the English scores, also a 3% gain in the math. Um, the junior English students are working on creating games and studying the catcher in the rye, the things they carry, and they'll also be speaking to a Vietnam like war veteran about the things they carry and they'll be interviewing him for their pre his presentation. Um, the, in the spring, they will um, have a Greek tragedy. Um, it will depict the brutality of the war, and they're um, very excited to see a Greek play at CASA. It's 
from the ninth grade to the twelfth grade, the acting program. Um, the intermediate and advanced classes um, will be working on sonnets and classical monologues in a verse presentation in the coming weeks. In the beginning, acting classes are working on a physical life project. In the public speaking classes, they have just found uh, finished their first round of speeches, and the students have been telling their stories about what is significant in their lives. Um, to, they've been working on a few key points, which were vocal production, um, eye contact, and posture. And then now they're moving on to their second speech project, which is to interview a classmate and give a speech about their lives. Um, and that's pretty much the update for FASA. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, this is Brandon Garner, our ASB president at Petaluma High, and also at Sarah Pruitt. Welcome. Hello, um, my name is Brandon Garner, and I'm the current ASB president at Petaluma High School. One of the first events we had to start up this school year was ASB camp at the Cloverdale KOA. Um, all of the ASB students got, got together and we started planning the early events for, for the school year, and one of the first being freshman orientation. Freshman orientation took place on the first day of school, where all the freshmen met in the gym, and we had purple people leaders who were chosen during the previous school year to, to lead them around. The freshmen entered the gym shy and nervous, but after spending some time with the purple people leaders and doing some sort of uncomfortable icebreaker activities, they began to open up and kind of be more comfortable with the fact that they were joining high school and being part of the Petaluma High community. On Thursday, September 6th, um, we had back to school night at Petaluma High, and the sophomores had their annual barbecue and made a profit of over $200. We had very good attendance for back to school night. Uh, our, high school, our high school's enrollment is over 1,300 students this year, and almost every single parent showed up. We also had our first Trojan Connections last Friday, and Trojan Connections is a way, is a way for students to be connected to their school and, and know what options are out there for them, whether it be community service events, club events, or just anything for them to be a part of Pebble Mahai. Um, Trojan Connections is a way for students basically to see every option that they have at high school. For the first Trojan Connections, students took a survey about Pebble Mahai, and the questions ranged from what was the location of the high school before the campus moved there, or to what does the color purple rep represent. On October 6th, we will be having our homecoming dance, and we will be having our football game in the float parade the night before on October 5th. This year's homecoming theme is Hollywood Magic, and each class chose a theme to build their float. And the freshmen chose The Wizard of Oz, sophomores Toy Story, juniors Grease, and seniors Pirates of the Caribbean. Last night at the Moose Lodge, Petaluma High had their first freshman parent night. Um, parents came for some food and information about what their child's experience will be like at Petaluma High. The purpose of this event was to get parents connected with the school and help make high school a more positive experience for their child. The evening started out with parents getting to know each other and, and ended with Mr. Stewart addressing the crowd. This coming weekend, on September 15th, Petaluma High will be doing Relay for Life with the American Cancer Society. We have done this event every year, and, but this year we have raised our expectations. We, are, we have currently raised over $8,000, and last year we raised approximately $2,000. This is just the first of many community service events students can do throughout the year at PHS. This year, our team has over 45 members, and last year we only had about 30. This school year has just started, and we are excited to see what happens. Between school events and sports teams this year, this year is definitely going to be an exciting one. And also, I brought my business cards, so please feel free to come take one after the meeting if you'd like to get in contact with me for any reason, or if you have any suggestions. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it represents like ro royalty because back in olden times, a lot of like royalty wore royalty blood purple because it kind of showed that that dominance. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Mm -hmm. I just put my spot on. Okay. <laughs> okay. So.
So I think that's our reports from students. Um, we have several more items on the agenda, but I recognize that some of you might have some homework or some other things to do. So we will take a very short recess if you would like to sneak out. Thank you very much.
Our electricity and natural sa gas savings are especially impressive. As you can see, it's well above overall average of 13%. Plus, our extended brake shutdowns maximize our solar system production significantly, enhancing the return of our investment. According to Terry Rudy's latest report, the results of the investment at Petaluma and Costa Grande High School have been nothing less than stellar, exceeding their projections for the first year by nearly 8%. Water, on the other hand, is another story. But with energy education's help, we both understand our challenges and have a plan in place to address it. In addition, we have recently identified some building anomalies, which once corrected will result in additional savings. And we are far from being done. In addition to continuing what we've already started, we have these energy and money saving projects also in the process. Our energy program is already due to the support of participation of principals, faculty, staff members, and especially our custodians for their commitment to conserve. And in closing, I'd like to give special thanks to the Board of Education for the foresight of adopting the energy program, Superintendent Bowman for the steadfast and tireless support, Julia St. John and the maintenance department for their continued support, and the grounds department in efforts to conserve water. I'd also like to thank Ray Jaimo and Food Services staff for assisting with shutdown efforts, Mike Cole and the Technology Department for their patience and support. Thank you. Is there any questions? Does part of the shutdown program involve like turning off lights and stuff during active times? Great question. Um, what we do, we take advantage of the unoccupied times. So um, when, you, when you were saying shutdown, our level of shutdown is when we go on breaks for extended holidays, depending on the level of shutdown we look at. Uh, we can, uh, food services has been amazing. We consolidate all refrigeration as much as possible and unplug every refrigeration, freezer, walk-in cooler as much as possible. Typically, your walk-in cooler in a 10 by 10 size runs anywhere from 15 to $20 a day to run. So it's amazing just, just what we've accomplished on shutting down. So to answer your question, yes, we basically shut down as much as possible, regardless if it's lights, computers, um, HVAC systems after hours, just making sure when the buildings are unoccupied that nothing is running. That's how we're actually saving a lot of money. Well, the reason I brought that up was because I was at the Pedal High Open House and there were a whole bank of lights with one on like at each end and then four or five or six other ones in the middle of those little dome lights um, were off. And so a number of parents well, kind of chide me when the board saying, you know, you guys need some money for lights or what's going on. <laughs> I said, I don't know, maybe they burned out or something. It turned out that they were turned off. Actually, no, they're burned out. If you're referring to the ones on F Wing, yeah. a majority of those are burned out. I think we have three of them that are actually working in place right now. That's a lot of money. It does save a lot of money because actually those things cost quite a bit of money, quite a bit of money to replace. And Part of the uh, program that we're looking at with uh, Sonoma County Water Agency is to do a lot of retro lighting so we can eliminate those uh, metal halide and the hard, high charges that come with them because they run about 1,000 watts. So when you add that up in hours, it's quite a bit of money. So we are looking to do retroing there. I think we have a total of three or four lights that are working currently in that area. That's the same on the football field? I just noticed it's an equipment to the, yes. Too? Yes, it's equipped to the base, our football field. Um, so on the water uh, situation, at one point we had uh, the opportunity, which has gone away um, with the sale of the surplus property, to put in um, all weather fields. Um, do you know if there are any uh, opportunities to look for funding to try to make Actually, that? I'm currently working on that. Um, there is a misdeception on conserving waters when it comes to artificial fields. 
you still have to what they basically maintain those fields and constantly run water to clean out the right. pathogens and things like that, if you will. Um, I shared this with Steve a couple times, but yeah, we are looking into funding, possibly, and then doing the an analysis to make sure that it will be a significant payback. Okay. And have you had any trouble with everybody cooperating? Or has it been pretty amazing easy? support. I mean, that's what Pelham is all about. I mean, it's an excellent community and just amazing support. Right. That's great to hear. Let's go ask you talk about how, as I go past on my way home in the evening, a lot of times it's in mm -hmm. Pelham High School, and it'll be darker than normal sometimes, sometimes not darker than normal. Is there a plan, or how do we balance lighting and safety? with people that may still be working, or is there, I mean, how do you do that? How do you, how do we ensure that we're saving energy but at the same time? Ensuring the safety? Yeah. I constantly work with staff members, especially custodians. Uh, they have my number, and I always, I rephrase, I want to have my emails to call me if there's any problems, and I immediately address it. I, I don't care what time of day it is, or if it's super late at night, I'm out there addressing it. I'm so. not aware of an issue. I just it, right, it right. just brings to mind the question, wow, it's like the dark moment. Right. It's, we, you know, there is some lighting issues that we're working on. Uh, they're all controlled by timers. Um, part of it is also controlled by the EMS, which is an energy management system. Um, our energy management system are outdated, and we can no longer find parts for those. So we're looking, as part of the program, to fund that from the Sonoma County Water Agency to upgrade to the newer system. So. That's currently what we're working on to address the lighting. Anything else? Thank you very much. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. And for our third presentation, Janice Cabedo, Assistant Superintendent of Educational Services, will report on the 2012 student sports. Hi, we're going to do something new tonight. So you, you have to bear with me for one second because we have to get logged back in. I had it set up, but it timed out. So we're doing something live. Okay. <laughs> All right, hey, it's working. Um, hi, everybody. Um, tonight we're going to do a very brief overview of the student test scores. What you have in front of you is actually a written report that um, outlines all of the progress towards the bold board goals that we set back in 11-12, and that is the update report regarding those goals. We're not going to go through. We are going to let you have it for the next couple of weeks and read over it and um, review it, and if you have questions, we will bring it back to our next meeting. Um, what we are going to do is we're going to dig into two areas, well, one area, um, and we're going to look at math, um, and we're doing something <coughs> simultaneously here because this is our new data system, and our new data system is called Aries.net. It is a, connected to our student management system. Um, I'm watching Troy, so I'm going to do this. Looks like a bunch of gobbledygook, doesn't it? Yeah. Looks like just nothing. So we're going to look at math this evening, and we're just going to look at two um, areas in mathematics. The first area we're going to look at is fifth grade. So what you see right here is all of our schools and how they scored overall on the CST that was taken in spring 2012. Um, you can see on the far side over there, FBB far below basic is red. Below basic is orange, um, yellow is basic, blue is proficient, and green is advanced. Okay? Don't worry about those. See those ones that have all blue and all, all red? Those are anomalies. Don't worry about that, okay? <laughs> um, this thing is still a little bit buggy, so. So when we dig in to fifth grade, we're going to take a look at fifth grade and how fifth grade is doing. You can see there are schools, our elementary schools across the bottom. Um, notice that McDowell is not here because they don't have fifth grade. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it took me a second. Um, it took me a second off of it. Oh, that's right, they don't have fifth grade. Um, and you can see that overall, our schools are doing very well um, in terms of fifth grade math. 
Um, we're um, tending towards around 70, 80 percent, between 70 and 80 percent in fifth grade across all of our schools for children who have scored proficient in advanced. So let's just take a look at some of the other things that we can look at here. So we always look at English learners, and that's what it looks like for English learners. You say, Mary Collins, wow, 100% basic if one child. Oh. Okay, so those are the anomalies that are, are in this system. It's still a little bit buggy. That one child who is an English learner in fifth grade scored basic. Okay, so that's why it shows up like that. Um, McNear School, 50-50, four kids here, four kids there. How do I know that? I can click here, and I'm not going to do it right now this because we're on television, right. and we have all the names. Okay. Okay? So, if you look at English learners, you can see our English learners are progressing, but are still, when you compare it to the overall, um, are still a little bit behind. Um, let's look at our reclassified ELs. The story looks very different. Green is advanced. Mm -hmm. Okay? Um, when we look at our socioeconomically disadvantaged kids, we are kind of having some different kinds of results, some mixed results here. Um, these are kids who will qualify for free and reduced lunch, which is our um, tag for um, students who are living below the poverty level. Okay? So you can see that our socioeconomically disadvantaged students also are performing well, but not as well as the overall. Finally, we're going to take a quick look at our special ed. And you can see, if we just look at McKinley, where we also have a special day class, McKinley has about, um, it's, it's about three quarters, almost three quarters, one quarter basic and below basic in special ed, so that we've lost a little bit of ground in our special ed. And when you go through the report that I just shared with you, you'll see that, okay? Um, you can see that with our brand new data system, we have instant data. This is updated every single night, not for CST, but as teachers use it to enter benchmark scores and different kind of formative assessments and that kind of thing. It will update it every single night, and the data will be there tomorrow morning for the kids, for the, for the teachers, for the kids. The next area that I wanted to take a look at is Algebra 1. Our fifth graders overall are doing very well. Um, we've watched Envision grow with them across the years because this is the group that Envision Math was adopted when they were in kindergarten. So overall, we are watching the scores go up as Envision Math goes up through the grade levels. Um, across our grade levels overall, about 70% of the kids are proficient or advanced. Um, up through sixth grade, and at sixth grade it's about 60-65%. About Let's look at Algebra 1 now. The reason we looked at fifth grade is because We've got a new piece of research that tells us that fifth grade fractions and the proficiency with fractions at fifth grade is an indicator of success in Algebra 1 later on. So I wanted to kind of get you looking at fifth grade so we can start thinking about that in the long term. At seventh grade, we have our students who are our superstars. Let's call them our superstars. They are a year ahead of themselves according to the state standard of taking <coughs> Algebra 1 in 8th grade. Okay? And this is how they score. We have, don't forget we have kids at Mary Collins, and they have an Algebra 1 program for the first time last year. Kenilworth and Petaluma Jr. Okay? Over 80% proficient at our two junior highs. Um, once again, I can click on these and get the kids. I can also click on these. No, I can't, never mind. <laughs> now let's look at eighth grade and watch what happens. Right now, this is the standard in the state. Children should, students should be taking 
Algebra 1 in the 8th grade. And you can see our scores are a little bit different here when you compare them to the 7th grade. So we're still doing well, still over 80% proficient, well, almost. <laughs> um, but you can see we've, we've gone down a little bit here now, okay, in 8th grade. Now let's look at ninth grade. Ninth grade, the kids are actually a year behind. They should be taking Algebra 1 in the eighth grade, according to the state standard. Now, here's the caveat. With our new Common Core standards, there is a discussion of moving Algebra 1 back to ninth grade. And we don't know what's going to happen there yet. Great controversy in the math community. And that's mm -hmm. from the state level. From the state. Sure people know that it's not coming from here. It's no. at the state level. Right, it's at the state level. So great controversy in the math community. Many math experts believe that Algebra 1 belongs at the ninth grade. And that's why the state is discussing moving it back to that point. Internationally, most people teach it at the eighth grade, which is why it got pushed forward in our last set of standards. Okay? So, and you can see, just remembering what happened in seventh grade, what happened in eighth grade, and now in ninth grade, you can see not as many of our students are proficient and advanced as there are in seventh who are superstars, our eighth graders who are on track, and now here are our ninth graders. Okay? We can go one more year because we do have some kids who take it in 10th grade and you can see the difference. The longer they're in algebra, the less proficient and advanced we have. So we had a discussion with our secondary principals this morning and we are going to be diving into this area and really investigating and looking at what's going on with our Algebra 1 program um, we have one school that teaches Algebra 1A and 1B, which is kind of a two-year algebra program, which, when you look at this, is actually causing some of, the, some of the scoring to be less than proficient in advance because the kids receive something that we call the gift of 200, which means no matter what you score, it goes down two levels because they are late to the game and they have not passed Algebra 1. Okay? So, questions? <laughs> well, it's nice to see that the access to the information is so readily. Yes. And teachers are inputting data. They will be. We haven't started yet. We're just getting up and running. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is taking information directly from the state putting it into our system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but then additional assessments can be put in. Part. Yeah. And then is this also being used to um, put grades and other things and make access for parents? Yes, it is. So in the ARIES portal, you can see over here on the side, um, this is where if the te when the teachers get to reporting grades and that kind of stuff, they'll report it through that um, portal right there. And and students will have access to student grades in the moment, assignments in the moment, whether they're completed, not completed, what their grades look like. Um, all of that is a coming feature of this system. And what is the time here, do you think? Um, within a year. Yeah, we'll be piloting it through the district this year with the expectation that we'll have it in place for all Mm -hmm. And our, our, our junior highs are already in the pilots. They are, all the teachers, that, or most of our teachers at the junior highs are already using the, the parent portal. Oh, well, that's great, because then there's no excuses. Right. <laughs> it makes it so much easier for a parent. Right. Mm -hmm. And student. Right. So, um, as you review, I'm not, we're not going to spend a lot of time belaboring right. scores tonight. Okay. As you review the report and as you develop questions, Let's bring them back to the next meeting and we can have a thorough discussion there. Right. Next meeting we'll also be looking at our EL students and we'll dive into that area a little bit. And we'll be um, considering board goals for 2012-13. Right, which all kind of, all kind goes, of together. goes together. <laughs> okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. That's good. Wonderful. Thank you, Jane. Yeah. Thank you, Jane. Okay.
item G, approval of the minutes of August 14th, 2012. Moved. Second. Um, I was kind of, wait, so all this favor? Aye. Uh, so three and one. Um, do I have any speaker cards for comments from the public? Um, and let's get that section then. I, I report on activities and correspondence with school board members. Um, busy start to the new year. Uh, site visits at Pembroke, back to school nights at uh, Pebble High, and varsity soccer, football games, and last Saturday night, the PEF Bash. So, very busy beginning. And item J, approval of the consent agenda by consolidated motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. We have uh, several hold items under administration and human resources. Um, our first hold is the employment report. I know we don't have an introduction tonight as expected. Right, our introductory had to go to back to school. Oh, yeah. but actually I have to have a motion before we can discuss it. Well, okay. Yeah. Second. Okay. So, we had two introductories, inter introductions to do tonight, and one had to go to back to school night tonight, and the other one had a family emergency. Anyway, um, I don't know if there's any other questions, but all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, item three. Uh, resolution 1213-03, recommended motion that resolution 1213-03 of the Board of Education of the Petaluma City Elementary and Joint Union High School Districts eliminating one eight-hour-per-day school facilities manager position effective October 31st, 2012, be adopted. Moved. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay, Ron? Yes. Okay. I'll take it here. It's in front of me, so I... Um, that again. That's a... Uh, uh, it's a position that was grant funded. We've known for quite a while that this position was going to have to be eliminated when the grant ended out, ended. And so that's essentially what has happened. The grant has come to an end. And so we um, will not be continuing that because we don't have general fund monies to, uh, to cover that. Yes. So do, do these go away or is one the grant away? Well, if this was something that we're no longer doing, or are we? Yeah, yeah some of the duties would be spread out to existing um, management employees, and the work on the grant to incorporate the emergency preparedness hopefully will conclude with this um, okay. with this time period, so that the, the new emergency preparedness plan will be in place as of October 31st. But there still is going to be some burden of other work this person was doing is not going to get spread further out. Correct. Right. Yeah. Which happens in all departments, it mm -hmm. appears. Well, when we say keep time. the cuts away from the classroom, I guess that's, that's what you mean. What yes. Yes. yes, yes. I mean, it's good that we haven't, you know, <coughs> taken the time to develop a our emergency preparedness plan and safety plan so that it now is in place and all of us take on our roles because clearly that is at the classroom level as well. There are a lot of things that, that sometimes don't appear to be impact what's happening in the classroom. We certainly want to be prepared right. and forbid a, an emergency would occur. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Item four, public notice that the board approved the employment of Danielle Walker to teach one period of event planning in grades nine through 12 at Casa Grande High School on the basis of a credential waiver of an English learner authorization for the 2012-2013 school year. I hear a motion. Move. Go ahead. Second. second. There you go. Okay. <laughs> so this is, a, this is an instructor who has um, received a credential through the um, CTE program, Career Technical Education program, which doesn't have um, uh, English authorization through that program. And so um, this employee has been working on that um, and continues to, to progress just actually double checked on that today, and uh, and that is in fact the case, and, and hopefully we'll complete that this year. Okay. Any questions about that? 
Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Item five, dedication of Metro E Petaluma Center and Fleck. Recommended motion that the board approve the dedication of the Mentor Me Petaluma Center at McNear School, along with the plaque honoring Val Richmond and her longtime work with the Mentor Me Petaluma program. So moved. Second. Who would like to speak to this? Um, I will speak, and I'll actually also introduce uh, Lois Santoro, who is the chair of the board for Mentor Me Petaluma. Yeah, it was like, and they came to us with a proposal to. Uh, dedicate the Mentor Me classroom at Mary Con or excuse me, at McNear Elementary School where Mentor Me Pebble began. Um, it was Mentor Me uh, McNear um, initially before it became um, for the entire district and so Lois. Hi, it's nice to see you. Hi, hello, Ford, and uh, Lee Bowman. And this is uh, I'm Joe Darkey, and I'm on the board at Mentor Me. And I'm Kit Bruce, also on the board of Mentor Me Petaluma. Yeah. Um, uh, earlier this year, actually, at the, um, just about the week, Val Richmond, who's been with Mentor Me uh, since, since its inception, um, stepped down and has started her retirement. And uh, she served uh, with Mentor Me since 2004. And she took the organization from just a fledgling um, mentoring program that really was uh, pretty much nothing um, to the um, to the program that impacts um, hundreds of students um, every day here in Petaluma. We are um, in 16 schools now. Um, we have um, several hundred mentorships. Uh, we. Um, we are working throughout the community with various businesses throughout the community. And our new um, executive director is Deb, Deborah Dalton. Um, but Val uh, worked tirelessly. And um, we would like to honor her. Um, her the first mentor center was at McNair School. Um, and uh, we would like to honor her by putting a plaque there by the Mentor Center, um, at, at the room that is the Mentor Center there. Um, you were the pair parent. Yes, as was Mary. Yes. <laughs> and I think we could see the definite difference in a child that became a mentee and going from sulky to um, actually happy and smiling. Um, so uh, Belle made a horrendous difference to the community and to all the schools. So I think she should be honored. And she is herself a mentor. Um, she has a uh, young girl who has just entered seventh grade now, and she is actively mentoring. Um, <laughs> you are a mentor as well. I, well, I am a mentor. I am. And I've had my kids probably almost three years now. Yeah. I have two, a challenge. <laughs> yeah, two <laughs> little boys who I've taken from fourth grade. Yeah. Um, they're now in seventh grade. Um, this is the plaque that we would propose to put. Um, if you can read that part. Yes, like Hopefully it says, we also have the room, room, the room, 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 the heart, soul, and, fr and friend of Mentor Me. And this is supported by the McNear staff as well, who's mm -hmm. been with that program. Well, and I can just add that I know that we get to have, we have a lot of uh, discipline related discussions and student matters and. Uh, the mentors have been so valuable to helping so many of the students that we've had to address. Um, so we know what an amazing program it is. So we really appreciate it too. And we really thank um, uh, Ms. Roman has been fantastically supportive of us and we have uh, a new board member coming on that we hope um, Maureen Rudder. And we really appreciate the support of the school officials all the way through with Mentor Me Thank you. <laughs> all right. So, all those in favor? Aye. 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 So, you'll let us know when that's going to be. Yes, we would like. To, yes, we'll talk to McNair McNair School and arrange a time. A time would be okay with yeah. them to put this up. Thank you. Nice to acknowledge you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. 
six was a discussion on the first reading of the board policy. No discussion. No discussion. Item B. I'm sorry. Business services. Item one. Um, acceptance of donations. Recommended motion that the board accept the list of donations. And who would like to speak to this? Hold. Midge. Uh, item number one. Hold. Um, I, I, I really don't know why this is a whole lot. That's weird. That weird? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I, I'm sorry. I, you know what? I still have to have a move to sorry. that one really quick. I was expecting a big discussion about <laughs> item number six. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, actually, but I need a motion first. I, Wait. I will move. Okay. Second. Okay. So now there's no particular. We really appreciate all the donations <laughs> that people yeah. give to we, the district. Since we're here, why don't we acknowledge Carl Bunnison and Century Town on Bunnison for a large donation of a finisher and punch unit mm -hmm. for a copy machine. Good. For Wayne and Jenner, for Brian, for uh, dollars to cost some things, to cover some things at Casa Grande and Safeway Grocery Store. Right. Okay. So thank you all. We couldn't uh, do without the support of our community. We really appreciate it. Yep. yep. Yes. All donations are special, and we are grateful for them. Oh, absolutely. Thank you. Okay. And there are no hold items under educational services. Since it, I guess you need to take action on that. Oh, yeah. All those in favor. Aye. Uh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. And now, uh, I have a public report of action taken in closed session in accordance to government code 54957.1. The case has been presented to the board that the student did commit an expellable act as defined by the California Education Code. Prior disciplinary actions have been attempted and were not successful, and or due to the nature of the act, the presence of the pupil causes a continuing danger to the physical safety of the pupil and others. The recommended motion is for the board to support the site discipline team's recommendation for expulsion in accordance to board policy and to facilitate enrollment in the county court community school. The student's expulsion status will be in effect for the fall and spring semesters of the 2012-2013 school year. Conditions above subject to review with evidence of positive attendance, satisfactory behavior, anger, manage <coughs> excuse me, anger management counseling program, community service, and appropriate academic performance. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Give it to share. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, future business calendar of activities for board members' consideration and items for our next meeting, which will be held here September 25th, 2012. We're have the special meeting. Oh, yeah, we will have a special meeting next Monday regarding uh, budget. the budget. First interim. First interim. No, no. I'm not an actor. I'm not an actor. Oh, she had to get way ahead of myself. Yes. <laughs> Wow. Okay, and I have an actual here next Monday night. Oh, we'll move it. Okay. Uh, that will be <laughs> September 17th. And the next regular board meeting will be September 25th. Um, there are some more back to school nights coming up on the calendar. Uh, yes, and then more meetings. So um, now we will adjourn this meeting for signing of papers of a routine nature. Uh,